When flying IFR, you need a clearance to do an approach like the one seen on the screen. Like an IFR clearance, approach clearances will all follow a similar format. In the approach phase of the flight, you may get vectors to final, cleared for the full approach, along with some additional phraseology you may hear during the flight. Communications from air traffic control will be simulated in the video, thanks to the help of two actual air traffic controllers. When being vectored to final and given an approach clearance, the controller will always give you your distance from the final approach fix in nautical miles. They'll give a heading to maintain until intercepting the final approach course, as well as an altitude to maintain or possibly an altitude to descend to and maintain until the final approach fix, followed by the approach clearance most of the time. There are times the approach clearance won't be given when being vectored to final, but it will be given when established on final, which will also be shown in the video. When being given vectors to final, there are tolerances on how tight the controller can turn you onto the final approach course. Normally, ATC is going to vector the aircraft a minimum of three nautical miles from the final approach fix, with an intercept angle no greater than 30 degrees. And when the weather is good, ATC can vector you inside of that three mile distance up to the final approach fix. When flying IFR, the most common method for getting on the final approach course is by receiving radar vectors. When ATC gives you a heading and says, vectors ILS 35 right, that's a good time to put in the final approach course. The final approach course is already entered, so we'll pretend we've already heard that from ATC. We're currently being vectored on a downwind leg, and this is what we hear. A November 784 Tango Charlie, fly heading 270 to maintain 4000. Heading 270 to send and maintain 4000 for Tango Charlie. So we're now being vectored to a base leg, and we've been given a new altitude of 4,000 feet. And this heading would be maintained until ATC gives us another vector onto final, but it is possible they forget about us. It does happen, it's rare, but if they do and you fly through final or you know you're getting close to the final approach course, the best thing to do is question ATC and just let them know you're flying through the final approach course. In this position, you could also hear ATC say, expect vectors across final for spacing, and you would be vectored back on a final from the other side. But let's say that doesn't happen. The next thing we would hear is this. November 4, Tango Charlie, five miles from the final approach fix, turn right, heading 325, maintain 4,000 to establish on the final approach course, cleared ILS, runway 35, right approach. Heading 325, descend and maintain 4,000 until established, cleared ILS, 35, right approach, for Tango Charlie. The first item given was the distance from the final approach fix. The controller told us we we're five miles from the final approach fix, turned to a heading, an altitude to maintain until established, and then cleared for the approach. When given an approach clearance, it is a mouthful. It's a lot to understand all that, to take in the information, and to read it back. The easiest way to overcome that is practice. Memorize the readback you're about to see and hear, and remember the heading, altitude, and clearance. Most of the time, the clearance is going to sound like this. It's going to take on the same format every single time. The pilot needs to read back the heading, the altitude, and the approach you're cleared for. Let's listen to the approach clearance one more time. November 4, Tango Charlie, 5 miles from the final approach fix, turn right, heading 325, maintain 4000 to establish on the final approach course, cleared ILS, runway 35, right approach. The distance from the final approach fix does not need to be read back. The items inside the red boxes are going to change with each approach clearance. The rest of the readback is going to remain the same every time. So remember those items and then just fill in the blanks as you get the information. Fill in the heading, the altitude, and the approach. Memorizing this readback in this format will make things a lot easier. And last of all, the easiest thing to remember because it's on the panel of the airplane in the transmission with your tail number. And once we've heard that approach clearance and read it back, we can now descend via the published altitudes on the approach plate. So in this position, we're at 4,000. Technically, we could go down to 3,600 and maintain that altitude until the glide slope is intercepted. If this approach was being done in real life, somewhere prior to the final approach fix, the approach controller would give you the frequency for the tower and tell you to contact tower on the appropriate frequency. And you would say, Abilene Tower, 784 Tango Charlie, ILS 35 right. Keep it simple. Don't say with you. They know you're with them. Just tell them what you're doing. And nine times out of 10, the controller is going to come back and say, November 784 Tango Charlie, clear to land, runway 35 right. Flying IFR, you're going to hear an approach clearance like this most of the time. But there will be times where you'll get a heading to intercept the final approach course, but an approach clearance may not be given the way it was in the example we just saw. Let's take a look at something else that could happen while being vectored for this approach. When we have that last vector to final, sometimes you may not hear the approach clearance with that transmission. Sometimes something like this might be heard. November 4, Tango Charlie, turn right hitting 325, intercept localizer. 
So here the new heading would be flown and the localizer would be intercepted and were not cleared to descend from the previous assigned altitude. This does happen and there's another example of a similar call in the next example. So for that, let's go to Boston. Now that we're in Boston, we're on a base leg for ILS 4 right. Let's listen to what that might sound like. November 784 Tango Charlie, descend and maintain 3000, expect ILS runway 4 right approach. Descend and maintain 3000 for Tango Charlie. Notice expect ILS 4 right was not read back. That was not part of any clearance. It was just expect that. You do not have to read that back. The only part that needed to be read back was the new altitude assignment. And the next thing we would normally hear from ATC is the distance from the final approach fix, a turn to intercept, an altitude to maintain, and an approach clearance. A vector to intercept the final approach course will be given, but there will not be an approach clearance. November 4, Tango Charlie, turn left heading 060, intercept the localizer, report established. Left heading 060784 Tango Charlie. So we're here we were given a heading to intercept and then told report established on final. We have course guidance, we're now established on final. Boston approach 784 Tango Charlie is established on the localizer. November 4 Tango Charlie, three miles from Navo, cleared ILS runway four right approach. Cleared ILS four right for Tango Charlie. Until cleared for the approach was heard, we had to stay at 3000 feet despite what the published altitude was for that segment. And now that we've been cleared for the approach, once we cross NABO, we can descend down to 1,700 feet and then intercept the glide slope from there. That approach clearance was a little bit different and you can see why. The transmission from ATC was very similar, except we did not hear cleared ILS 4 right approach at the end of the transmission as we did on the previous approach back in Abilene. And when the words cleared for the approach are heard, that is when you can press approach. By pressing approach, the localizer is going to be followed, but also as the glide slope comes down, it will be followed by the autopilot. And by this point in time, Boston Approach is going to tell you to contact Boston Tower. November 4, Tango Charlie, contact Boston Tower, 128.8. 128.8 for Tango Charlie. And we would check on with Boston Tower, November 784 Tango Charlie, ILS 4 right. And Tower would respond with 784 Tango Charlie, clear land runway 4 right. But if there's traffic, they could say 784 Tango Charlie, continue for runway 4 right to be followed by November 784 Tango Charlie cleared to land runway 4 right. This next approach will sound a little bit different also. It's a full approach but we will circle to land. When not in radar coverage a full approach is going to have to be conducted. When doing a full approach the aircraft will be flown to the initial approach fix, flown outbound, procedure turn completed, and then intercept the final approach course inbound. And this clearance will sound a little bit different than the ones we've heard previously. For this example, we'll be cleared to a fix, we'll be cleared for the approach, and then told which direction to circle. And the aircraft can only be given directions on circling when there is an operating control tower. Pay attention to the end of the clearance you're about to hear. Instructions on how to circle will be given in the clearance. ATC will specify where to circle with one of eight cardinal headings, north, northeast, east, southeast, etc where to enter in relation to the runway and whether it be downwind or base, and then left or right turns while maneuvering to the runway. And let's listen to that clearance. November 4, Tango Charlie, clear direct Abilene Vortac, clear view off approach circle east of the airport right base runway 35 right. Clear direct Abilene Vortac, cleared VOR alpha approach circle east in a right base runway 35 right for Tango Charlie. The first two parts of the clearance are already completed. We were told to circle to the east and enter right base for 35 right. The aircraft would overfly the airport and fly to the east and then enter a right base for runway 35 right, which is here. And prior to even circling, we would be switched over to tower and we would also be given a clearance to land by this point. But if a clearance to land wasn't given or you don't remember that it was given, be sure to question ATC. Those are the basics of approach clearances. Those are the ones that a pilot would most likely see. Those are the ones that I most likely see on a day-to-day -day basis with professional flying. If you're looking for more information on IFR communications, be sure to consult the Aeronautical Information Manual. Also, be sure to check out the 7110.65, which is the air traffic controller's version of the Aeronautical Information Manual. But the best way to get better with IFR communications is practice. And you can practice outside the airplane with Pilot Edge. Pilot Edge works with all the major flight sims. The flight plan has to be filed through their website, and every ATC position will be filled along your route, which includes clearance, ground, there's even ATIS in there, and even center. The controllers use the 7110.65, so all the phraseology and procedures are official. 
As an ATP rated pilot with nearly 20 years experience in private jets, I was very impressed the times I've used Pilot Edge. They do charge a monthly fee, it's on their website, but it is much cheaper to learn ATC phraseology from your home on a computer versus in the airplane. There are two areas of coverage, the Western United States and also the Los Angeles area. I highly recommend the Los Angeles area, which goes all the way from San Diego up through Las Vegas and beyond. And as a disclaimer, I have not been paid to say this. It's just a product that I've used, and I think it is that good that it's worth telling people about that want to get better talking to ATC or build confidence talking to ATC. The web address is pilotedge.net, and I'll put a link in the description. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to click on the videos tab where you can find over 100 videos. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you desire, you can join the channel to help support it. And there's also a server on Discord where you can message me directly. A special thank you to the air traffic controllers, David and Shannon, for lending your ATC voices. And as always, thanks for watching.